Hey everybody, it's Anna. Welcome back to my Fluid Art channel. Today I'm doing another bloom pour. So last week I did a bloom on a record to make a clock, and it turned out really, really cool, but the color blend was not exactly what I had in mind. So because I still had my colors mixed up, I thought, let me try it again, except this time I'll balance my colors a little bit differently. And this time I'm doing it on a canvas instead of a vinyl record to make a clock. This is a 14 by 14 inch canvas, but I'm using exactly the same colors. I've got the same pillow paint, which is this Glidden white eggshell. And yes, uh, still gonna blow it out with my little MHU hair dryer and hoping for another great result, but hopefully in the colors that I had been planning on the first time. All the details for the colors and the brands and how I mix them will be down in the video description if you're curious. Let's make a painting! So I'm going to start by adding my pillow paint right here to the middle. You want to have enough pillow paint to cover the canvas because the pillow is what all of your colors sort of sit on top of and float on top of as it spreads. So this is at least 90% of the paint in the project, but you don't want it to start out as this massive lump, otherwise you could have problems later. So. Spreading it out a bit. It doesn't need to cover all the way because we will be spinning to stretch. But just want to make sure that we have enough. Great. I'm going to give it a quick, gentle torching to get out some of these air bubbles. You don't want to torch house paint really vigorously, but a little bit of torching can help pop some of those air bubbles, or you can also use a toothpick or a skewer or something to pop them. But you want to make sure that your pillow paint does not have a lot of air bubbles, otherwise it'll make white specks in your finished piece. Okay, that is looking pretty good. Now, let's put the colors down. I'm going to put them in the same order that I did last week, which is going to start with some Payne's Gray, but I'm not going to put it quite as thick, because I don't want this to be the primary color. And then the crimson as well, this Alizarin crimson. I'm just going to, instead of like one big puddle of it, just going to put it on in sort of smaller drizzles. Now some gold. That's probably plenty. And then this Caribbean, lovely turquoise color. I want that to be one of the main colors. So making sure that there's enough of that. And then also this copper. Well, that's looking gorgeous. Okay. So it's the same colors. They're just uh, balanced differently than the last time. I do want a little bit more of this crimson. It's gotten kind of covered. So let me put that a bit more on the top because if you don't have some of that, it's not going to look as good. And then this is not exactly in the middle. So I have my larger spinner today because this is a canvas. I like it because the thumbtacks that I put on the bottom of the canvas, they can sort of grab on the sides of the, of the spinner. So it's easier than trying to like stick it down on top of a cake spinner. Let me just check that it's centered in all directions. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay. 
Okay. So I'm going to put a fairly large section of cell activator right there in the middle. And I'm going to blow it with my mouth to kind of open it up, and then I'm going to use the hair dryer to blow it out. Here we go. This is pretty. Already I can tell there's much more of the turquoise and the copper, and it's overall it's just lighter than my other one. So that's great. We got plenty of dark from the cell activator, and I can see some Payne's Gray in there, but for the most part, it's a much brighter, it's a brighter design. I'm gonna use my straw and blow in the middle to force up some more cells. Yeah, this is gorgeous. So my only question right now is how much will I be able to stretch this? Because when I did the record clock, it spread way more than I was expecting. Here, I don't know that I can bring it all the way out to the edges. So before I stretch it, well, first of all, I want to add a little bit more pillow around the edges just to make sure that there's enough paint to kind of pull, pull on the rest of the design and pull it off. And then I think I'm going to do just a little bit of modification of the edges just to swirl it a little bit so that if it doesn't cover all the way to the edges uh, it still looks pretty. Let me try pulling this petal outwards a little bit. Okay. Let me try a slightly larger one here. Well, we're definitely pulling the design outwards. <laughs> Not sure how much of that is what I really want, but... really sure I'm making this look better. So hopefully I can spin a lot of this off. I'm gonna put a swirl right in here. I'm very much inspired by Jody Flynn's Floating Blooms. She, she has the YouTube channel, The Painted Dreamer, and she can just make some crazy, crazy modifications on her blooms. Okay, uh, yeah, a little bit. So we got some swirls, we got some edges dragged out. Um, I don't know. Let me, let me spin it once and see how easy it's going to be to stretch, and then depending on that, I might do some more modifications, or I might just spin it. Very cool. Okay, so this is definitely not a centered circular thing. So I think we're just going to forget about the whole floating bloom effect and just try to stretch it over the edge, which means 
this section right here, I'm going to take as much of this as I can away because it's going right towards that corner. Okay, let's spin again and just keep stretching it until I'm happy with it. Man, this is definitely the biggest, most cell-filled bloom I've ever made, so I'm very happy with it. Okay, this needs to come off a bit more. This needs to come off a bit more, but it is moving. Like, as I spin it, it is stretching, so I'm just gonna keep on stretching and stretching as much as I can and try to get it to where I'm happy with it. Wow. This is stunning. So there's this one corner here, which is where I tried to pull it. And I don't know, let me see if I can just soften that this way. The black line is broken here. I'm just gonna sort of drag with my, yeah. Let me give it one more spin, get some of that area off that I just tweaked, and then I think I'm happy. I don't think I spun it hard enough. Nice. Okay, so we've got some white in this corner and we've got some white in this corner, so there's balance there. If I spin it anymore, we're going to lose this white corner and then it'll look strange. Oh, this is really, really pretty. I love it. All right, let me take you in for a close-up. Okay, this turned out so, so cool. Look at that lacing. This copper is going to look so amazing when it's dry and you can see all the shimmer. So there's that little swirl that I did. Add some extra interest. Really pretty. Oh my goodness. All the luscious, just fading colors. So here's that other swirl. I may tweak it a little bit with a brush when it's dry. I don't know. That little pop of pink in there. So cool. And then the gold. And then the center is just so perfect. It's not all one color, it's a nice mix. That looks like a peacock feather. That's crazy. And it's just perfectly centered and the cells didn't get all weird shaped. I love it so much. Man, this makes me wanna do more blooms. I think using that hair dryer is really helping me to get the right pressure on the cell activator to make it do lacing in a way that I have not been able to get just by blowing with my mouth. But yeah, really pretty. And I'm glad that I tried the same color combination again, because this is much more dynamic than how it turned out with the clock. So thanks guys for watching. I will show you how this looks when it is dry. So let's go to that next. All right, here we go. It's all done. 
all dry, it dried really, really nicely. This is just spectacular, especially as it's dry and you can see all of the metallics, the copper and the gold just shining. Oh, it is so cool. The swoopy part up there, and then that center, my goodness. So there was a little bit of white that had popped up from the pillow paint, and I just added a little bit of Payne's Gray on top of that so it wasn't quite so bright, make it not as distracting. But yeah, look at that peacock feather cell. I'm just blown away by this. This is my best bloom that I've ever done, so I'm really, really happy with it. And it's going to look even better when it is either varnished or resined. I'm not sure which one I'm going to do. Varnish is easier, and both of them, by adding a layer of gloss, will make it just pop so much more. Thank you guys for joining me for this one. I hope it inspired you to try something new. Let me know down in the comments, have you ventured into the world of the Shelly Art Bloom? I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!